Shout out to Justin Knoll on Patreon for two months of support. Get weekly goods, tutorial files, mockups, templates, items from my store, and more. As well as supporting the free tutorials on this channel. Check out my Patreon in the description below. Well, what's up guys, Quezia or Noah here, bringing you guys another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create this glitch text in Cinema 4D and a little Photoshop. Both the Cinema 4D and Photoshop files are available on my Patreon if you guys are interested in becoming a member, as well as these posters which I covered in a Skillshare class that uses some of the same concepts. If you're interested in that Skillshare class, there is a link in my description for two months free of Skillshare where you can check that out. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So in Cinema 4D, we're going to try to create something like this. So this is actually in three nulls. So I'm going to go ahead and select all these and press Alt G and hide them for now. And we're going to go ahead and get some text. So usually I do Mo text, but in this case, I'm going to do the spline text. And I'm in my Cinema 4D Light Studio, uh, which is my Lightroom. Uh, you can get it in my store if you're interested, but you can just use any lights you'd like in Cinema 4D or one of my free Lightrooms in one of my packs. Uh, or any Lightroom you have, it's up to you, it doesn't really matter. Anyways, on this text, I'm going to align it middle. And then you'll be able to see that I'm kind of at like an angle looking sort of down at the text. And that's how I have mine set up. You can look straight up. ACMO Display, SSI is what it's called. I'm going to change my horizontal spacing to 5, just so we have um, some spacing between those. And then an important step here, come to Intermediate Points, change that to Uniform, and I bumped my number up to 11, but you could do even more if you'd like. And now with that, I'm going to go to MoGraph um, Mo Instance. And I'm doing that because if you want to change the text later on, we're going to have uh, a few duplicates of this Mo instance. And you can come in and just change this text and it will up each individual one and change it. It's just uh, an easier thing if you're not familiar with the instance. Now let's go ahead and get the and click the extrude. I'm going to make my depth 50 on this one. And then we want to go to the caps tab. You can uh, kind of recreate it the best you can um, so go to the bevel shape I'm going with round and I'm gonna make my size 0.5 not a grid so we want to go back to object come to subdivision and bump that up and I had three originally but I think four will work as well could probably do five but I'm gonna stay at four but any you can see our whole text is covered in grids and it's not perfect we got some triangles and stuff but that is absolutely fine now I'm going to change, I'm going to turn off my lines, just go back to shading and with extrude selected, I'm going to go to MoGraph and fracture, but I'm going to hold alt while I click fracture with extrude selected. So the extrude goes into the front of 0.5. We want to do negative one and it will disappear, which is what we want for now. Um, come into the shading now and some in more interesting things as you press play that you like better than the original. So, Feel free to mess around with that. You can also mess around with the seed to get some different results. And we'll play around with that a little more as we go. Um, scroll down a little further. I'm going to bump up my cycles a little bit. Uh, I'm going to do point 0.2. You can do more, but I, I don't want to do too much. It gets a little too crazy. And then finally, come to contrast and shoot that up to maybe like 90, somewhere high. And now you can start to see where our... Uh, whole effect is going because now we have some bigger squares and since we just turn everything to zero so object 0% time explosion strength zero um, you can see if we go to cluster thickness set that to about two centimeters this gives everything some thickness and you can see the difference 
I just think it looks a lot better. You don't have to do it necessarily, uh, but I think it adds a little bit to um, everything. So I like to use it. Feel free to use it if you don't want to, no big deal. But we are done with that null. So I'm just gonna call this render or you can call it whatever. Uh, but we're gonna actually select it and press Command C, Command V to duplicate it. Open up the duplicated one and we're gonna make some small changes to it. So first things first, click the Mo instance and then come to the effectors and get a random effector. And to keep things easy, drag that inside the Mo instance so we know it's associated with that. And go to the parameter, uncheck position, check scale, check uniform scale, and set this to negative 0.25. Um, go to extrude then and bump this down. We'll go to about 35 depth instead of 50. And then finally we'll go to the shader and open that up. You can click that, uh, the shader tab, and then open this up. Change the seed. You can just go up a few or down a few, whatever. And then global scale, maybe you move that to 300 instead of 200. Select the extrude then and move it slightly back. Okay, and then duplicate that one, hide what we were just working on, and on this new one, we're gonna do all the same things, just with some different values. So go into that random 0.5, um, instead of 35 depth on the extrude, we'll do about 20, and then the shader again will come in, and we'll do 400 global, and bump up that, <laughs> okay, whatever that works. Um, Again, we'll select the extrude and move it back slightly. Okay, cool. And then we can click zero on the timeline since we have those animation settings on. And we can click play and see what version of this we like the best. Um, I'll click pause there and I have global illumination checked on this. So I'm going to uncheck that real quick for timeline what we can get. Kind of like this one let's see what that looks like got some holes in the x but you see what i mean you want to play around with this to get some better um, looks or a look that you like But once you're done, you want to add some materials. So the materials we're going to be adding uh, to the fractures. So I'm going to actually open all these. And I have my materials here. So I have two. Ignore the gold. It's these two here. So basically this one without the reflection is a gray metal from my materials uh, pack, my most recent one in my store. Uh, my V7 pack if you're interested. Uh, this is a stainless DK. You can see it's just a simple metal texture and then I have this pretty cool reflectance on it. And then this one here is a darker gray with no texture. This is my chrome material, slightly altered. And in the reflectance, it's the same spectral effect with a slightly different color on the layer color that's like a more... Then click this thumbnail, also my mix strength is at 15, uh, but then click this thumbnail and you'll get settings like this. So I'm going to walk you through what I have here because it's a lot easier than doing it from scratch. But um, I have an intensity of 600 and a variation of 230 and then this is set to mirror. It could, you could also do tiling. Um, you guys might be familiar with this reflection from my facet. <laughs> We should end up with something sort of like this, which is the render I'm going to be using. So that's the goal. And then once you're happy with what you have, go ahead and render it out. Make sure you render it with the alpha channel checked so there's no background and as a PNG. And I render mine like this, ambient occlusion, global illumination, object glow, but 
You can render it however you want. And now let's go over into Photoshop to add even more glitchiness. I'm just gonna get the render and drag it into my Photoshop icon in my dock, which you guys can't see because it's off on the other monitor, to open up a document like this. And I'm gonna add a solid color, which will be our background, and that color is gonna be 0C1220, so a dark blue, and just drag that down below. And we have our text. So the first thing we're going to do is add some glitch effects by just getting the rectangular marquee tool and creating some rectangles on here. So I created one, I'm going to hold shift and continue to add some. Okay, there we go, nice and simple. Now I'm going to press command C, command V, and it will copy that and you can see we cut it enough to notice the glitchiness. And we're going to press Command J on that to duplicate it. Press Command T, hold Alt, and increase the size. And you can see that gives us a little more, but that's a little too much. So we're going to come down, add a layer mask, get the brush tool, flip our colors so black is our main color, get a soft brush, which I already have. And yeah, I'm going to use a brush like 172 and just erase some of it. I don't like that top one. Yeah, there we go. So I erased some of it, so there's some bits poking off, but it's not too crazy. And there we go. So now let's select everything there and group it, call it render for now. We're gonna be creating a lot of groups. So um, th this one will be render temporarily and I, so it completely hides it. Get your brush tool again, and this time we want white. And keep a pretty small brush, and we're just gonna add a little bits of blur in here. So you can kind of click in a few spots. I like to click where there's um, some of the smaller squares and just add a little bit of that blur. That render group again, duplicate it, merge it, bring it below this time, go to filter, blur, motion blur. And I'm 